Hello, my name is Ryan Strong, and I'm going to be talking about the game I created called uh, Racer One. It's going to be a two-part video. First part's going to go over just the uh, main points of the game, how it was created, uh, the scripts and stuff, and then the second part will be uh, the primary gameplay shown on an actual device. Uh, so to get started, we'll start off here in Unity with the uh, main menu scene here as you can see. Uh, it looks blank obviously because I'm not really showing anything but if I switch to my 2D view and I can switch out to my canvas you can see that it has a just a, the name of the game and a button to start the game. How I worked on all of that is um, I just created the button, created a script which we will go over in a bit that just uh, allows you to proceed from the main menu to the start of the game um, which is track one which we will go to now. So track one is this here. It's basically just a track on a terrain that you race on. It's got a finish line here, the starts are at the spawn points up here, and you go around, it would be three laps to win um, for this for the purpose of this game, but uh, for, for this video I shortened it down to one to two laps to make it go quite a bit quicker. And I also have a loser scene so that if you lose the game it will go to it'll go to that and say I'm sorry but you lost click on main menu take you back to main menu and same thing for winner yay you won so back to the main menu here as you notice I have a button here that says gas I have that there to indicate that the player when they're when they're pressing on the screen to play the game they can kinda of press in that general direction so that they can access the ability to have the character go. Um, it doesn't have anything set up on it. It's more just a visual representation to let them know, hey, press here. They can technically press anywhere on the screen and the car is going to proceed forward. As for the rest of the stuff, I really only use a few scripts here. I know I have a couple extras in here, but I really, the main ones I use are car movement, the game manager, and uh, that's primarily it. I don't think I really have anything else attached to anything. So we'll start with the car movement script. So in the car movement script, um, a lot of this code I actually got from this website right here. It's the tanks tutorial on the Unity website. It was very helpful in providing a lot of the basic info to get the, the vehicle kind of moving. It didn't really help with the uh, turning. I had to mostly do that on myself on my own and with a little bit of help from my instructor, but overall I got it to work. So what I have here is I have this public int and player number equals one. Uh, that's set up because you can identify who's player one, player two, so on and so forth later on once this is set up as a as a more than just two-player, multiplayer style game. Uh, in here, I currently have written out um, as the max speed of 30, but it's set up to show up in the inspector as well, which made it to where I could adjust the values and make it um, work better with the, the gameplay. So I, I actually did adjust that, and I will show you that back in the inspector in a bit. The M speed is the actual speed that the car is going and excel speed setup so that's pretty self-explanatory you know how fast you excel decel speed that's uh, how fast you decelerate as you are no longer pressing the screen turn speed uh, same thing so I use the accelerometer for the controls and I had to set it up to where it, it would turn at a at a certain speed otherwise if I just put a generic reference of just do the turn it was it was super super slow I also have my audio source and clips here and the pitch range here it's set up but it's not really used as for the uh, the audio as well 
So we'll move down to the stuff that's mostly used. So in here in my start, I have the info about the player, the movement. Not much of this is really used. I changed a lot of the stuff around, so it's kind of null and void for purposes of the game until I go back to it. But the main stuff is in here in this private void update. I have a setup because of this right here, network behavior, which we'll go over that in a little bit. <clears throat> I had to say whether or not it's the local player or not. So I really am only worried about referencing the local player. And what the local player is, is it's just the the actual device that's using it. So if you've got two people playing with different devices, your device is the local player for you, their device is the local player for them. And I have my movements set up here, engine audio set up. I put a print in here so I could see to make sure that everything was actually working properly, just saying yes, the car is moving. And I have my move function here, which is down below. Uh, the primary thing for the update that's used though is this transform right here. This transform rotate, this is what is the actual accelerometer portion. So I'm saying that I want to turn vertically times my turn speed, which I spoke about earlier, and that'll make it to where it goes, it, it turns at a whatever speed I set it at. And then my engine audio here, this is something that I'm still working on a bit. Um, it worked differently before I added my info for my move here, which I'll go over in a minute. But um, how, what it's supposed to do is it's basically supposed to say, okay, if, you, the play, if the car is not moving, then it's going to play the idle sound. If the car is moving, then it's going to play the engine sound, the engine driving sound. So um, those are things I have to adjust. Uh, so we get down to the public void move function here. This is where the actual acceleration and deceleration is set up. So I have... In if input dot any key so that's saying that if I am touching either I'm touching anywhere on the device or say I'm using the W key to press uh, forward to try and go forward then it's going to make my speed plus or equal the Excel speed so whatever my Excel speed is set up it's going to add that and it'll keep on adding it until it gets to and then it's going to transform the position here forward, make move forward. And it'll gradually pick up speed until my max speed is reached, and as, at which time it'll make my, main, my actual speed equal to max speed. Otherwise, if I'm not using the button anymore, I've, I've let go of the device, I'm just letting it go, then it's going to gradually decelerate that speed. It's gonna make it go slower by the decel, decel speed that I have set up until it ends up reaching zero and at which point it'll say okay my speed is zero and it all movement stops. The next script that I deal with is this game manager script here. The game manager script is set up to it's gonna have all of the lap info, um, win lose conditions, everything. So uh, I have a bool set up to say winner currently equals false. The current number laps equals zero and then max laps will be two. The reason it's two is that represents three laps because Unity always starts with zero as the first one. So at the start I make sure that num laps still equals zero just in case something happened in a transition from scenes. And then down here I have a public void on trigger enter which is set up with a collider, which is actually in the game scene, and I'll show as well in a few. And that's set up to say, if my number of laps is greater than or equal to my maximum number of laps, so if num laps here, zero, is greater than or equal to two, and the winner, winner equals false, then it's gonna print at the console, you know, winner, and it's gonna change that boolean to true and it's going to load the level for level two which is the the win level otherwise for say the second player or the 
the person that goes through next, you know, if, if winner equals true and number of laps equals max laps, then it's going to print loser in the console and it's going to load level three, which is the loser one. And if neither one of these are the case, then it's going to increase num laps. So from zero to one, then to two, so on and so forth. And then I have in here my start game and main menu set up as well because those are it's easier to put it all in the game manager. So that button that you saw at the very beginning that said start game, that's what this function is for. It's application load level one, which goes to the actual main main game scene. And for here, uh, when you get to the losing scenes or winner scene, it has a button in each of those that says main menu or and it'll take you back to those via this as well. I also implemented one other thing that I forgot to mention. Um, I implemented just a touch test script here for multi-touch. It's not really used for anything other than to print to the console to say that I have touched the screen, but I have it implemented in there just in case for some reason I decide to add something else. Like maybe I decide to add a, a form, like a small form of a drift or something to the car for easier handling. Um, that's, that's what that could be used for. And uh, that's implemented here with just saying touch my touch equals input dot get touch of zero because it's going to go through an array. Um, and it's just any, anywhere I touch on the screen. This is only in one scene currently, and that's the start menu or main menu where you select start game. And uh, I'll show you how that works in the console in a bit. But um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it for for those. So let's go to here. So my game manager, like I mentioned, I have the game manager. I put the game manager script into the actual empty object that I had created. And I gave it, um, I actually, for this one, used a cube. And the reason for that was because it's actually a collider. So you can kind of see it down there, but I'll zoom in on it. It's this real small line, a couple of green lines here that outline the um, area. I have it set up here because that's where I want the finish line to be. And it's easier to, to set up to change the number of laps that way. So. I set num laps down to one to main that basically you're only going to do two laps to see who won the game. And it's currently set to false, which is why it's not checked. Uh, you can test it by changing it to true if need be, which I've done to show that the loose scene worked as well without having to run multiple devices. Next thing I added is this network manager here. Network manager is a pretty easy tool to use that Unity provided us with. What it is, it was uh, initially a, an empty game object that I created, and I added the network manager, network manager HUD, and I had a script attached to here that's no longer used. It's the camera follow script, but I'm not using that. I'm actually using a different camera currently. And basically what it says is, okay, I've got my offline scene, which is this main menu scene. That's the first scene that pops up in the game. And then my online scene, which is track one, which is this current scene that we are looking at now. Then in the spawn info, I have my prefab of the actual car, which I will show you in a moment. And I have it auto-creating the player so that it actually loads up the player into the game, into the, per into the proper spot for the start of the game. Next I have these spawn points, spawn point one and two. They go along with the network manager. They have a network start position script added to them so that you know that you're gonna spawn in those two spots currently for the two vehicles to play the game. A lot of these other things are just basic uh, regular Unity assets, uh, you know, directional light, uh, water, uh, just to give aesthetic pleasing. Um, uh, one important thing that I had to implement were these two things here, inside colliders, outside colliders. So my entire track 
is surrounded by these invisible colliders. And the reason for that is because when I had the game set up, the current track here, it only, the lip only extends a short distance, so the car easily would ride up it and go right over it onto the terrain outside, which is something I did not want. So I set up these cubes instead, and I, I basically took off the mesh renderer and only attached a box collider to it to make sure that the car couldn't exit the track and leave the bounds of what I wanted them to stay in. So I have it set up for the outside of the track and the inside of the track. The random thing here is just a lot of the random aesthetics that you see, like the power lines here, some road signs off in the corner there, and the rocks along here and stuff. So those are the, the main things in the hierarchy. So I have it set up to where since I since I have this network manager, I don't place an actual player onto the scene. It's done automatically for me by this player prefab script here. And how that's done is it takes this car that I have here and it will load it into the spot where it's supposed to go right here. And then I have my audio movement script attached to it. I have network identity script, local player authority. What that is saying is that all this stuff is going to be controlled by the local player, the person that's playing it, so their their client. So if they're using an iPod, it's controlled. Everything that's done is controlled by their iPod, not by a server. And then I haven't done anything with this yet, but I currently have the network transform script added there as well. So um, here in the car movement script, like I mentioned earlier, I have the player number. I have max speed actually increased from 30 to 80, as you can see here. Speed set to zero because that's what we start out as. Excel speed is one because I don't want them to start off and just go super fast initially. I want them to kind of pick up speed. Decel speed of 2.5 because, you know, you let off the gas and maybe you want to simulate, simulate hitting on the brake. It's going to slow down a little bit faster. I kept the turn speed about the same. And then I have my sounds here. Currently I'm only using the engine idling sound. And car moving is currently checked, but once the game starts, it's it's not going to be checked until the car is actually moving. And attached to that, I have the main camera. It's directly behind the car and up a bit as if it was kind of a uh, third person view just to make it easier to follow the car around the track and I think for the most part that's pretty much it for these main assets so uh, let me show you what the network manager does here so since we have the network manager in when I hit play what it does is it's gonna bring up this screen here it says, okay, scene is missing a, a full screen camera. That's okay, because that goes away once you decide to pick whether you're going to land host, land client, land server only, or enable matchmaking. Uh, for the purposes of this video, what we're doing is we're going to concentrate primarily on land host and the land client. That's going to allow me to utilize the game that I already have built and just show how both things show up on the screen. Now, I won't be able to test it, properly with the computer because I don't have any turn ability set up on the um, on the computer through for like uh, using the any of the keys because I'm only using the accelerator or accelerometer but I can at least give you an idea of what it looks like in a moment but you click on those and that's what brings it up so what we'll do real quick is we'll go and look at the game I'm gonna open up two copies of it windowed 640 that's good I'll move this one over here and this one right here let me close that alright oh, start game and what we're wanting to do is land host on this one which shows the car and like I said you touch it's gonna make the car move alright do the same thing over here. We're going to join the game. 
not to close that. So you can see that I have car up there and this car here. So I have two vehicles in the game and it's controlled separately by the whichever car is you know being messed with, whichever screen is being messed with. So I mean I could drive around this like this I guess and it would take me around until I get to that point which I currently don't worry about because you'll be turning at that point. So that's uh, for the most part the those controls. What I can do is kind of show without you guys seeing my actual iPod in hand because that's going to be the next video. I can at least show how the turning works and the control works utilizing a device by just using the device that's in my hand currently. So I've got, I'm going to go ahead and hit the button to make it easier. Oh, cancel. Hit the wrong button on the device. All right, so I can turn left and right, and then I just press on the pad or on the device, and it helps me to move so I can drive around the level, let go, and it slows down a bit. And I just kind of make my way around. Whoa. It's a little tricky to control, but still a few tweaks that need to be made just to get the system to work properly. So that's one lap done. And then we go to the other lap. Now the scene is not as dark as it's because I'm currently using it in the editor. Uh, if I were playing it in the actual game, as you saw earlier, it's it's not really dark. Oh, I got knocked outside. Yeah. So, uh, that happens. Um, minor glitches here and there. But, as you can see, for the most part, that, that works. Um, what it would do is, you know, this would end up moving up to this, and then the next time I went around, it would make that equal true and change to the next scene. So... The next video is going to be a, a short, brief video just showing the game actually working on a device, and I'll talk to you in a bit.